Hey, how do you flush an upper decker? Mm. Oh, hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Nick from Rad Dad Builds and welcome back to another episode. Yeah. I'm in it for keepsake, in a fair with the cleat lace, beat foot with the bare face and a slick tie, that's what she say. She left good, she a big tease when she bite lip with the wink face. Hella bad when she throwing it bad, she bring out my way for the team play. For Pete's sake. So you're watching episode two of two. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I built this wide oak upper vanity cabinet with glass mirror doors for less than 500 bucks. So you're gonna to wanna to stick around for this one. And as always, roll that intro. Yeah. So I started off this project by utilizing all the spare material left over from my previous project, which in fact was the lower vanity, part one of this two part series. If you haven't checked that out yet, I will link it somewhere around there so you can go watch it. The material that I'm using is three quarters of an inch white oak plywood. I built this upper vanity cabinet in two sections, the glass mirrored section and the open lower section. I made a start by ripping down the pieces of plywood to eight inches wide, which is the depth of the cabinet. I'll soon have all the measurements and plans up available on my website very soon, which I'll link in the description down below. Once I had ripped down all the 8 inch pieces that I needed, I measured and cut the top and bottom sections of the cabinet. I cut them to size using my table saw. I then swapped out my cross cut blade on my table saw for my dado blade. I set my dado blade to 5 eighths of an inch thick. I then set my fence 3 quarters of an inch away from my blade and then the blade 3 eighths of an inch high. I then removed 3 quarters of an inch off both ends of the top and bottom sections of the cabinet. This will create a little seat for the two side sections to sit in, giving it more stability. I then clean up any blade marks by hand using a chisel. Because this cabinet is nearly 60 inches in length, I wanted to break it up so it has three doors. From either end, I broke the top and bottom pieces up into three equal sections. I then marked three quarters of an inch equally over the marks that I just made and then remove those sections using my dado blade on my table saw. Once that was complete, I then cut the four vertical sections for the cabinet, the two sides and the two middles. I then changed my dado stack to a quarter of an inch wide, at quarter of an inch high, and then moved my fence half an inch away from the blade. I then removed the quarter inch channel from the two top and bottom and the two side sections of the cabinet. This is to create a quarter inch groove for the quarter inch back panel to sit in. For the back panel of the cabinet, I'm using a quarter inch piece of white oak plywood. I ripped the back panel to size on my track saw. I then put a slight chamfer on the back panel on all four edges front and back. This is to allow the panel to sit into the grooves a lot easier. And now it's time to assemble the cabinet. For ease, I drilled from the inside of the cabinet out on the three quarter inch grooves. That way I'm not guessing when I come to screw the cabinet together. I dry fit the cabinet and pre-drill all the screw holes so that way the plywood doesn't split. And then using wood glue and wood screws, I screwed all the uprights to the base of the cabinet. I then slip the back into position. And then attach the top section the same way as before, using wood glue and wood screws. Countersinking and pre-drilling where necessary. For 
for added stability and strength when attaching the cabinet to the wall. I added two rails, top and bottom at the back of the cabinet. I glued and screwed them into place. Notice that I screw them into the vertical uprights as well. This just gives the whole cabinet more strength. As the top section of this cabinet is pretty much done, I made a start on the open lower section. I ripped some 9 inch strips out of some white oak plywood. and then cut them to length like before on my table saw. I reset up my dado stack to 3 quarters of an inch and then removed the 3 quarters of an inch channel off the top and bottom section. and then remove the quarter inch channel, same as before, to allow for the back panel to sit in. I fixed a section of the cabinet the same way as before using wood glue and wood screws. Except for the top piece, or the lower piece rather, I clamped together, because I didn't want to see any screws when the cabinet was hanging on the wall. While that was drying, I made a start on ripping some white oak for the edging. On my table saw, I ripped a bunch of quarter inch thick strips of white oak. And then removed any burn marks on my drum sander. and then ripped the strips down just over 3 quarters of an inch wide on my table saw. To attach the white oak edge band into the cabinet I'm using painter's tape, wood glue and my pin gun. I laid the cabinet down on its back and then applied a thin bead of glue along the open grain of the plywood, and then spread it evenly using the brush. I placed the edge band in flush with the inside of the plywood and then pinned it down using my pin gun at every 6 to 8 inches or so. And then removed any excess glue with a wet cloth and then taped the edge banding down every 2 to 4 inches. This will just help the edge banding sit nice and flat until the glue dries. I repeated these steps on both sections of the cabinet. I let that dry overnight and the next day I peeled off all the painter's tape. And then clean up any proud bits of edge band and using a trim router. I'll link the router bit that I'm using here in the description down below. Once the cabinets were cleaned up, I made a start on the doors. I broke down a sheet of 3 quarter inch oak plywood using my track saw and then cut it to 1 eighth of an inch smaller than the top part of the cabinet using my table saw. That 1 eighth of an inch will create the equal gap around the doors. I placed the panel on top of the face of the cabinet making sure there's an equal gap all the way around. I then on that panel marked a square line center of where the two inner sections of the cabinet sit. I then, on my table saw, I set my fence to the measurements of those marks and then cut the slab into three sections, creating three doors. Also, as the blade thickness is one eighth of an inch, this will create a one eighth of an inch equal gap all the way around the perimeters of the doors. To hide the ugly plywood grain on these doors, I used oak iron on edge banding. I ironed on the edge banding on all edges of the doors and then cleaned it up with a knife and a bit of sandpaper. To hang the doors on the cabinet, I purchased this real simple hinge jig from my local Home Depot. It comes with this piece of plastic with all the guides and the instructions, and a drill bit to bore out the hole for the hinge. I will link this and the hinges that I used in the description down below. I marked out the hinges 5 inches in from the top and bottom of the door, and then bored out the hole to which the hinges will set in, making sure not to drill too deep. 
I use the same hinge jig to mark the receiving end of the hinge and attach those plates to the cabinet. I then clipped on the door and then repeated this process on the two remaining doors. Once all the doors were on the cabinet, I then adjusted them until they sat nice, leaving equal gaps around all three of the doors. During this time, I sent off all the measurements for the three doors to my local glass supplier to get some mirrored glass cut to the same size as the doors. The very next day, and about 70 bucks less in my pocket, I glued the glass mirror onto the door fronts using clear silicone. I placed a few beads of clear silicone on the face of the door and then carefully dropped the mirror into place, making sure it sits flush and flat with the door. I then taped it down with painter's tape and let it sit overnight for the silicone to dry. I repeated this on all three of the doors. The glass itself is 1 8 of an inch thick mirrored glass with a slight chamfered edge to remove any of the sharpness. It cost me about 70 bucks to get the glass cut at a local glass shop, which I thought was pretty good. While that silicone cures, I marked and drilled out for the shelf pin. Here I'm using a shelf pin marking jig, which I'll link in the description down below. I then bored out the holes that I marked using a 3 16th of an inch drill bit. I then cut the shelves out of some leftover white oak plywood and edge banded them using the oak iron on edge banding tape like I did before with the doors. Once the shelves were done, I gave the whole cabinet a good sand all the way up to 180 grit using my orbital sander. And then took any sharp edges off by hand. For the finish of this cabinet, I'm using Osmo Oil poly which I'll link in the description down below. I applied the oil sparingly using a blue shop towel, and I let it sit for about 5 minutes. Once it had sat for about 5 minutes, I cleaned off any residue using a new blue shop towel. I repeated the step 3 times, allowing 8 hours to dry in between. Once the finish had cured, I then peeled off all the painter's tape on all 3 of the glass doors and then cleaned off any silicone residue. I then attached the doors to make sure everything was sitting nice and my gaps were still equal, ready for installation. In the bathroom, I marked the height of where the cabinet is going to sit and I marked the underside of the top section of the cabinet. I then leveled that line using my spirit level. Using my stud finder, I made a mark at every stud and then marked a level line down from each mark that I made. I then transferred the measurements to where the studs are on the back of the cabinet. And then on those marks, through the rails, I drilled a hole from the back of the cabinet to the inside of the cabinet. I then turned the cabinet around, and then from the inside, I countersucked those holes that I made. This will show me where the studs are when I come to install, making the whole thing a lot easier. I screwed a level cleat on the wall to where the top half of the cabinet will sit. And then put the cabinet into place sitting on top of that cleat. And then using wooden shims and my spirit levels, I shimmed and level the cabinet until it sits nice and level and plump. I then fix the cabinet to the studs using the holes that I pre-marked. 
and then covered any screw holes using oak fast caps. These are pretty handy and I'll link them in the description down below. They come in all different kind of wood types and colors. And then I added all the shelf pins ready for the shelves. I cut off all the wooden shims using an X-Acto knife and then brought in the lower part of the cabinet. And this section, uh, it didn't really go in as smoothly as the top one and uh, I will be repairing the walls after, so don't worry. Once it's in, I roughly clamped it into place. I adjusted the lower cabinet so it sits exactly one inch in front of the top cabinet. This is to allow for the three quarter of an inch door, the one eighth of an inch gap and the one eighth of an inch glass. I then screwed the bottom section to the top cabinet, covering any screw holes with fast caps. I then hung and adjusted all three of the glass doors. As I couldn't really attach handles to these doors, I used these kind of push latches that I got from my local Home Depot. You simply screw the mounting plate flush with the front of the cabinet and then attach the push latches to the mounting plate and then adjust accordingly. And once it's adjusted all you gotta do is push the door and it pops out for you. And that pretty much sums up this project other than a couple of the scuff marks on the walls that I gotta cover up. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. I think this turned out great. The cost of this cabinet including the glass cost me less than 300 bucks. Which means both the upper and lower cabinet cost me around 600 bucks to make which is pretty good really. So as always, if you've got any comments and questions, please don't hesitate to ask me down below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and share with every single person that you know. I have new videos coming out every Friday, so make sure you go add me on Instagram at raddadbuilds to find out what's coming up. And as always, stay rad. Peace. Yeah.